quite the material we're used to. Well, you're going to hear it now, baby. Uh, I may seem uh, a little avant-garde and weird and strange and artistic to you, but here's the thing. If you're on my Facebook, and many of you are now after the last show, <laughs> I'm a serious writer. And I'm actually a pretty good one. And I used to be a writer for the Seattle Weekly. Are you familiar with the magazine I wrote for? Yeah. And uh, the Seattle Weekly asked me to do a story about rodeo people. I'm not making this up. <laughs> from a city slayer's point of view. I'm from New York City, born and bred. I went to a very fancy college. I graduated magna cum laude, which means I came louder than anybody in my dorm. <laughs> and the weekly asked me to write about the Roy Rodeo. Are you familiar with Roy? It's not the end of the world, but you can see it from there. <laughs> they asked me to write about the Roy Rodeo for the weekly, and here's what they offered me. My accommodations in Roy, this is a true story song, Miss Sarah, and they gave me $15 for Western wear. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> in Roy. <laughs> Folks, look at me. Other than the boots, which I mugged off a gay man. <laughs> Do I look like I would fit in in Roy? I mean, that's like somebody rushing the stage at a Pat Boone concert. <laughs> Threatening how many people in this room actually got that joke. So I go out to Roy after going with my $15 check to the Value Village near my house because Value Village rocks. If you can get past the fact that most of the clothes smell like an inmate has donated his bathroom, <laughs> Value Village rocks. I bought a little tiny children's cowboy hat that perched on top of my head. And I bought a little pair of child's shaps that were made out of pleather. And then with that, I paired it with my motorcycle jacket and my motorcycle boots and pretty much looked like one of the Dixie Chicks on acid. And proceeded in my Hyundai which I'm in the process of restoring. 2007 Hyundai. Finally figured out what the rear window defrosters are for in my car. They're to keep your hands warm when you're pushing that piece of shit. Proceeded to Roy to the row day of. My reservations were at the day in, not the days in, because it's only open in Roy one day of the year, and that's the actual day of the real day of. Oh, God. Oh. The desk clerk signed me in and, has, and assigned me room 206 at the Roy Day Inn. I got there, and the towels were kind of dirty. So I took them back to the desk clerk. You do that, wouldn't you, ma'am? Sure. I took them back to the desk clerk and I asked for new towels. And on my way back to my room with the clean towels, I noticed a little stack of magazines called What's Happening in Roy. And on the cover was a picture of me checking into the Roy Day Inn, room 206. I tell that joke to figure out who has weed in the audience. And I have a lot of people to choose from tonight. So I check into the day in and I go to the rodeo dance. Now, let me sketch in some background from you. I'm from Manhattan, which is in New York. I had this on my on my on my Facebook this week, I lost my virginity in an Airstream 
in West Hampton, which is a fancy place outside of New York when I was 18 years old. I am, I am somewhere between a socialite and a redneck. I have no idea where I fit in the spectrum, but somewhere, wow, she's got a nice ass. Good check. Yeah, no. Shine that buckle in her fucking face. Anyway, um, you didn't even know I was talking to you, did you? Okay. You need to follow in Randy's footsteps. You need a haircut. Anyway, um, He didn't get the memo about mullets from the last show. I'm just warning you, show up at every show, otherwise we'll talk about you. Anyway, so now I'm at the rodeo dance, and I have never been around cowboys before. And let me tell you something, cowboys have got a lot going for them. For one thing, they wear the Wrangler jeans which lift everything up and push everything together. And if you look closely, you can see actual scrub cleavage, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there is nothing like a 115 man all dancing around with their balls jangling. It was so exciting. <laughs> and it was a steakhouse that this place <laughs> Anyway, I'm watching all the cowboys dancing around, and a guy comes up to me and says, Ha! I'm Dusty. I said, No, you're not, darling. That's your standard. Let me get that for you. He said, No, I'm, my name's Dusty, and I'm with this here place, and I'd like to buy you a snake bite, which the, is the official drink of the Rodeo Riders of Washington and Oregon. I, I didn't even really know what he said, but it sounded good. So I said, Dusty, what's in that drink? It sounds intoxicating. He said, well, it's roses, lime juice. <laughs> what is it? Yukon Jack. And Yukon Jack, thank you. Yukon yes, yes. Jack, thank you, because otherwise I wouldn't have had the next joke. Uh, well, I watched the beverage maker making my drink, and they seemed to realize that I was five foot four and fairly slim, and the drink was huge. I don't want to say anything, but it was served in an oat bucket. <laughs> and I downed that puppy. And all of a sudden, the rodeo took on a whole different feeling, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody looked like something in a Hallmark movie. <laughs> It was very exciting. Dusty said to me, ma'am, you know how to two-step? I said, first of all, I'm too young to be a ma'am. I haven't had a mammogram yet. <laughs> Although I rehearsed for my mammogram by laying on the floor of the garage and having somebody run a car over me. <laughs> but I said, you know what? Uh, I would love to go out and dance with you, but I, I don't know how to do that dance. And then, from the crowd, ladies and gentlemen, stepped a hero. A man who is the embodiment of my favorite actor, Sam Elliott. I knew you'd get it here in the town. I knew it. Ooh, I think I just peed a little. for dinner. <laughs> so the guy that looked like Sam Elliott comes walking across the room towards me and says, Ma'am, would you like the two-step? I said, well, I don't know how to do that, but I have been in several 12-step programs since I can. And I knew that would catch fire in this fucking room, too. Anyway, 
What I like about Snohomish is that you people like to drink. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. He said, I've been watching you all night, and you're mighty attractive. And other than that weird little outfit you seem to be wearing, I would like to take you out on the dance floor. Just before he asked me to dance, he asked with a, he danced with a woman who was wearing a, a gray sweatshirt with sweat stains under both pits and a trucker hat that said Boy Howdy on it. What the hell does Boy Howdy mean? And he asked her to dance and she went out and danced with him and then at the end of the dance he tipped his head and said, Thank you, ma'am. It's been a pleasure dancing with y'all. And then walked off and came back to where he had been standing at the bar. Then he asked me to dance. He said, I'd like to take you out on the dance floor and teach you how to dance. I said, I would like that. He said, I want you to, t I want to tell you a few things about me. Don, listen to me. Here's a good come on for you. Oh, no. He's already coming on to the next woman or man. Anyway, um, he said, I want you to know, I thought you were bringing me in, right? Why isn't anybody bringing me a drink? <laughs> hey, Daylene, I'm going to screw your dad, so will you bring me a drink? <laughs> Take a little of the tension down before you get the Cabo. <laughs> Randy's looking at me like, look at her go. Wow, that chick's got balls. sports on television. I watch the cooking shows on PBS on Saturdays. And after church on Sunday, I attend garage sales to save money. And I thought, damn, if he's not gay, he is perfect. If anybody touched it, I went through the fucking roof. Here, hold on to that for me. A toast 